Today, we're going to show you how to mount your LiveScope transducer on your Force Crack and Trolling motor. For this process, you will need a Phillips screwdriver, 5mm hex wrench, 6mm hex wrench, 2.5mm hex wrench, clippers, zip ties, and the LiveScope downshaft adapter kit. In this video, we will be mounting the LVS-34 transducer, but the process would be the same for the LVS-62 and LVS-32 transducers. The downshaft adapter kit will come with mounting for the LVS-32, LVS-34, and LVS-62 transducers. Two different transducer discs are included in this kit. For the LVS-34 and LVS-62, the smaller profile disc will be used. The thick disc is used for the LVS-32. First, peel back the release liner on the lower profile disc to expose the adhesive. Align the corresponding holes and apply the disc. Three knobs will be included for the LiveScope mounting bracket. The longest knob is used with the LVS-62. The second knob is used with the LVS-34. The small knob will be used with the LVS-32 transducer. Then remove the four screws securing the shaft cap to the propeller drive motor using a number two Phillips screwdriver. Carefully lift the lid of the shaft cap to access the cable connectors inside. Unscrew and disconnect the USB connector. Ensure the O-ring remains in place. Release the latch and pull the connectors apart to disconnect the data cable. Unscrew and disconnect the transducer cable. Remove the split connector and the rubber O-rings. Carefully cut off the two zip ties holding the power cables. Slide down the protective coverings on the power cables. Remove the four set screws on the two power cables using a 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench. Disconnect the power cables. Next, remove the protective coverings from the power cables. Now we will remove the propeller drive from the shaft. Remove the six screws that secure the shaft base to the propeller drive motor using a 5mm hex bit or wrench. You should dispose of these six screws. New screws, washers, and O-rings are provided in the transducer replacement kit. Remove the recessed nut securing the transducer cable to the shaft using the trolling motor tool provided in the kit. Straighten the cables at the top of the shaft. Gently pull the propeller drive motor away from the shaft base until you can see the power and data cables connected to the propeller drive motor. Push the transducer cable grommet out from the downshaft adapter. Remove both plugs from the trolling motor to have more clearance when feeding your cables. This will make your transducer installation easier. Now, cut the 18mm LiveScope transducer connector using scissors or clippers from the LiveScope transducer. Determine whether you will stow your force crack and trolling motor on the port or starboard side of your boat. In this video, the Kraken will be stowed on the starboard side, but the process is similar for the port side stowing. Add the LiveScope cable grommet nut through the LiveScope cable. Make sure the threaded side of the cable grommet nut is facing toward the LiveScope connector. Feed the transducer cable through the plug hole on the starboard side. Now, ensure there are no knots in the cable of the LiveScope. Insert the connector through the plug hole and feed through the bottom of the shaft. Make sure you leave 6 inches of cable for a service loop. 
The service loop will be made near the end of the installation. Feed your 12-pin transducer cable up the shaft. Next, feed the power and data cable through the shaft. It may be helpful to tape the power cables and data cables. This will ensure that all cables will stay together when being fed through the shaft. It may be helpful for someone to hold the two transducer cables down while feeding the power and data cables. Make sure that the power and data cables clear the shaft. Now apply grease provided in your kit to the LiveScope cable grommet. Then apply grease to where the cable grommet will sit on the LiveScope cable. Now create your service loop. Make sure it is at least 6 inches. The service loop will help with changing orientations for forward, down, and perspective mounting. Place the rubber grommet. Place and tighten the cable grommet using the big side of the crack and trolling motor tool. Then place and tighten the 12 pin transducer grommet using the small side of the grommet tool. Blow out any dirt or debris in the six threaded holes on the top of the propeller drive motor using canned compressed air or an air compressor. Prepare the six bolts from the kit by placing a washer and a four and three quarter millimeter O-ring on each one. These bolts are different lengths. Make sure the bolts are in the position shown before tightening. The bolt length corresponds to the downshaft adapter height. Apply grease to the O-ring on each bolt. Avoid getting grease on the bolt threads. Next, apply a medium strength thread locking compound such as Loctite 243 to the threads in the six threaded holes on the top of the propeller drive motor. Realign the propeller drive motor with the downshaft adapter. Thread all six of the prepared bolts using a 5mm hex bit or a wrench halfway through to ensure the shaft base and the propeller drive motor are properly aligned. Tighten all six bolts to 35 inch pounds with the torque wrench. Then tighten the grommet nut using the grommet nut wrench. Next, we will reinstall the LiveScope bracket. Insert the M8 screw into the downshaft adapter. Place the LiveScope bracket on the M8 screw. There is a tooth on the LiveScope bracket that will be placed in the downshaft adapter. This can only be put in one way. Lightly tighten the M8 screw securing the LiveScope bracket to the downshaft adapter using a 6mm hex wrench. Make sure this is fully tightened. The M8 screw has a nylon patch that may make it difficult to tighten. Align the transducer bracket with the downshaft adapter. Place and tighten the small knob. Then place your LiveScope transducer on the bracket using the corresponding knob to secure the transducer to the bracket. Push the rubber plug out of the bottom with the shaft cap removed. Next, we will need to reconnect our sonar, power, and data cables in the top of the shaft cap. Slide protective coverings onto each of the red and black cables. Then push the cables into each power connector. Place and tighten the set screws using the 2.5mm wrench to secure the power cables together. Slide the protective coverings back over the power connections. Now secure the power cables to the shaft cap using zip ties at the location you removed the power wires. Next, connect the 12-pin transducer cable together. Make sure to apply the O-ring and split connector on the transducer cable. Then tighten the locking collar. Now feed the live scope cable through the square hole in the bottom of the shaft cap. Place the O-ring and 18mm split connector back onto the live scope connector. Reconnect the data cable to the corresponding port on the top of the shaft cap. Then reconnect the USB cable.
place the square cable grommet over the transducer cable and secure it in the hole. Line the top of the shaft cap with the corresponding holes once all of the cables have been reconnected. Insert and tighten the four screws to secure the shaft cap to the shaft. And that's it. Thanks for watching. For more help, please visit marinesupport.garmin.com.